Good afternoon, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Carmelite Monastery as we gather for the eighth day of our novena to Our Lady of Mount Carmel with the theme, Faith, Humility, and Prayer grounded her faithfulness to God and her mission for the Church throughout her lifetime. Let us all rise as we welcome our Lord Jesus Christ in the persons of his ministers, Monsignor Ronald Quijano with Monsignor Gilberto Marengo. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Like Mary, we pray for the grace of faith, able to do our synodal journey by fixing our gaze on Jesus. To prepare ourselves worthily celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let us first call to mind our sins, be sorry for them, and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
us pray. Lord God, you will that the Order of Carmel should be named in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son. Through her prayers, as we honor her today, bring us everlasting joy in her company. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First reading, a reading from the book of Genesis. Israel set out with all that, he, that was his. When he arrived at Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father, Isaac. There, God, speaking to Israel in a vision by night, called, Jacob, Jacob. He answered, Here I am. Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt. For there I will make you a great nation. Not only will I go down to Egypt with you, I will also bring you back here, after Joseph has closed your eyes. So Jacob departed from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel put their father and their wives and children on the wagons that Pharaoh had sent for his transport. They took him, they took with them their livestock and the possessions they had acquired in the land of Canaan. Thus, Jacob and all his descendants migrated to Egypt. His sons and his grandsons, his daughters and his granddaughters, all his descendants, he took with him to Egypt. Israel had sent Judah ahead to Joseph so that he might meet him in Goshen. On his arrival in the region of Goshen, Joseph hitched the horses to his chariot and rode to meet his father, Israel, in Goshen. As soon as Joseph saw him, he flung himself on his neck and wept a long time in his arms. And Israel said to Joseph, At last I can die, now that I have seen for myself that Joseph is still alive. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God.
turn from evil and do good that you may abide forever for the Lord loves what is right and forsakes not his faithful He will guide you to all truth and remind you of all I told you. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves, so be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues, and will be led before governors and kings for my sake, as a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You'll be given at that moment what you are to say, for it will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents 
and have them put to death. You'll be hated by all because of my name. But whoever endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Truly I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I come here both as a pilgrim and devotee of the Blessed Mother. And I offer this Mass in thanksgiving for all the blessings received by our diocese. And above all, to thank in particular your prayers and that of the Carmelite sisters for us priests, for the religious and the Christian families. My companion at the altar, as mentioned at the introduction, is Monsignor Gilfredo Marengo, the Vice President of the Pontifical John Paul II Theological Institute for Marriage and Family Sciences. He is here with us since Sunday evening as our guest. He gave spiritual reflection to our clergy during our recollection last Tuesday. And last Wednesday and Thursday, he was the guest speaker for the Theological and Pastoral Conference about family. And the topic was about Omani Vite, after 55 years, updates and challenges. He gave also a short colloquium with the professors and students and graduates of the institute, including a meeting with the brother president of La Salle. Since our John Paul II Institute in Bacolod is an associate center of the main campus in Rome, he is with us as an expression of synodality because the Holy Father, Pope Francis, would like to draw the data from our beliefs and practices as Catholics around the world and this must be coming from the grounds, from the grassroots. He would like to determine our faith life on where we are now so that we can come up concrete and real solutions which are relevant to our need as a people. And thus, our theme chosen for our Novena Mass here at Carmel and for the fiesta is very relevant. At the heart of our journey to synodality is Mary. And indeed, when we journey together with a common path, we engage in dialogue, we listen. At the same time, we wish not only to focus on ourselves, but we wish to invite others who don't belong to us, may be different from us. And we try to engage, to exchange our thoughts, experiences, so that we can truly discern God's plan for us, at the same time to listen to the voice of Jesus for us. Our task then is to guide people on where they should go, that the end of this synodal experience, we will grow in holiness, knowing Jesus, loving and serving Him, and being in union with Him. This is our goal. And the person, the, the key, the model, wherein we can imitate so that we may be worthy to participate in this synodality is the Blessed Virgin Mary. For she listened to the Word of God as a disciple. 
she put this into practice and ran in haste to the hill country to serve her cousin Elizabeth. This is the meaning of Marian devotion, to listen, to put into practice the word of God, obeying the will of the Father, and to serve the many Elizabeths, the poor ones in our midst. Working for family ministry is not just the tasks of our family life ministers or the guidance counselors, the priests or the nuns. We are all stakeholders of the family. Sometimes our focus is on how to do preparations only for weddings. There is an grande celebration and we pay so much resources for this as if our wedding is like that of Cinderella and the movies that we watch imitating the romantic celebrations they have. But we miss sometimes that our task is not just to prepare young people to get married, but to prepare them to have an authentic family life which lasts until the end. And so we are aware of the principle that the success of the celebration depends on our preparation. And preparation may not just be immediate, but also remote and proximate, meaning our preparation, our catechetical formation, wherein we are immersed in our faith in Jesus and develop a personal relationship with Him which will become our moral compass in our synodal path is from womb to tomb. From womb to tomb, every day is a call for renewal, a call for holiness. It is not just enough that we present baptismal certificate, confirmation certificate, certificate for Holy Communion, as if we are now qualified to get married. No, we need to determine the amount of faith at the same time, the depth of our commitment to embrace the duties of the married state, our responsibility to care for the family, which is the little flock entrusted by the Lord to us. Aside from my work for the Family Institute, I'm also involved in our diocesan marriage tribunal. And sometimes our understanding is when we experience differences, difficulties in terms of relationship, wow, we imitate movies that we watch with expression, talk to my lawyer, see you in court, blah, blah, blah. How come that we have that kind of attitude? As if uh, the solution will always be legal or canonical. Go to the tribunal, go to the civil court. And then who suffers? Not only you, but your children. Divorce that is pending in our Congress right now, or even our separation, may not be the absolute cure for a sick kind of marriage. It will rather kill marriage and all the stakeholders of it. Only love then is the perfect cure for a broken heart. This is where we should invest more to infuse moral values on the children and the young. And this is not easy. For when we engage ourselves actively in our respective parishes, helping married couples, strengthening family relationship, the first persons 
whom you find difficult to deal with, difficult to evangelize, may not be your neighbors, may not be those who have strained relationships, but your family members themselves. Correct? Huh. How can you teach properly the doctrine on the conjugal love for man and woman in marriage when members of your family have been doing infidelity and adultery kind of practices? How can you teach the value natural family planning when one of your members are spreading contraceptives to your neighbors? How can you promote healthy relationship to respect parents, to be honest, to be kind and compassionate when young people inside your home have been guilty of all vices like alcoholism, addiction to gambling, and prohibited drugs. You see, this is a great uh, challenge for us to really be witnesses of our faith and above all, to accompany people. We don't send away persons who are vulnerable, especially when they are members of your family. We don't send away persons who are sick. We keep them. We care for them. For every person has a value. Every person deserves to be listened to. No matter how broken we are because of what we have been through, still we are children of God and our presence is a gift. You don't throw away gifts. You keep them. You cherish them. For in gift giving, what matters most may not be the gift but the giver of the gift. Every gift carries with it a memory of love. And thus, we are asked always to have infinite patience and kindness. In the words of Pope Francis, always find new pathways to be signs of mercy and compassion to one another. How can we let people appreciate the sacred doctrine without distorting this in our effort to help, to accompany, to guide people in pastoral way. And at the same time, how can we repackage the doctrine wherein we may not appear very rigid and at the same time uh, very keen on the minute details of all this to the extent that people will no longer come to us. They will dislike us because we are too rigorous and too moralist to them. We have to, to widen our horizon. That's why synodality is the key wherein we let people feel they are loved, accepted, welcome, and redeemed. Talk to them. Sit beside them. Listen to their story. Perhaps by listening, you realize that you, you are gradually entering, entering into the world of that person. The more you can be of help to guide and infuse change. This is something that we learn from the Blessed Mother. She is a model of synodality because she journeys with her son Jesus.
from the moment of annunciation, birth. She was there during the infancy years of Jesus until he was presented in the temple. She was present at the beginning of public ministry during the wedding at Cana. She was there at the foot of the cross standing, weeping quietly, contemplating as the mother of Jesus, the mother of the church. And she was there present the time of Pentecost, the birthday of the church. May we always imitate her example and above all, to be generous in offering our talent, time, and treasure, our whole life in the service of evangelization. People will hand you over to the enemies, as mentioned in our gospel reading. But Jesus provides this assurance. Do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. That has been taken care of by my Father in heaven. Just be open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Listen to the voice of Jesus. That's the most important lesson we can learn in our synodal reflection. For we are all members of the same family of the Lord. We worship the same Lord. We receive the same baptism. We profess the same faith. We are all members of the same household of God, the church. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of Carmel, accompany us towards a life of holiness closer to her Son, Jesus. Amen. Please stand for the prayers of the faithful. Almighty Father, you... Your watchful care reaches from end to end and orders all things well. Gathered together to honor Our Lady Queen and Beauty of Carmel, who walks our synodal journey of faith, hope, and love, we pray. O Mother of Jesus, intercede for us. O Mother of Jesus, intercede for us. We pray for the Universal Church, that all bishops, priests, and religious, in union with Pope Francis, Proclaim the good news of salvation to the ends of the earth, we pray. O, o Mother, Mother of Jesus, Jesus intercede, intercede for us. us. May those who hold public office serve in love, truth, and justice, having their priority the flight of the poor, the jobless, and those wandering about homeless in our society, we pray. O, o Mother, Mother of Jesus, Jesus intercede, intercede for, us. for us. Bless our diocese, Patricia our Bishop, the clergy and the faithful for the great synodal journey in our parishes. May this bring renewal, strengthen of faith, and transformation of the life of our local church for the glory of God, we pray. O Mother, Mother of Jesus, Jesus intercede, intercede for, us. for us. O Mary, show yourself a mother of our struggle against evil and darkness with the falling off of morality and our families and society, we pray. O Mother, o Mother of Jesus, Jesus intercede, intercede for, us. for us. Make us, Lord, a channel of your peace in our troubled world. Grant the world leaders be guided by wisdom how best to resolve the end of war in Ukraine, we pray. O, o Mother, Mother of Jesus, Jesus intercede, intercede for, for us. us. Open our eyes, Lord, to see you in the stressing situation of the poor, the hungry, and the suffering. Touch our hearts to share your goodness and love to make life better for them, we pray. O Mother, Mother of Jesus, Jesus intercede, intercede for, for us. For Carmel, we pray for our Father General and the needs of the Order. This year, Carmel gratefully commemorates her centenary presence in the Philippines. She is seeing of God's merciful love, whose faithfulness is great. They are new every morning. Her union with our Lord and our Blessed Mother is the core in her vocation, which is prayer and sacrifice for the needs and mission of the whole church, we pray. O Mother, Mother of Jesus, Jesus intercede, intercede for, for us. us. Have mercy, Lord, on the sick. Set them free from all encumbrances of mind, body, and soul, we pray. 
O Mother of Jesus, intercede for us. We humble faith, we lift our cares to the Lord, our family intentions, and those we promise to pray for. We pray. O Mother of Jesus, intercede for us. Grant, O Lord, everlasting peace and joy to all those who have gone ahead of us. May the victims of war and the recent sea tragedy that claim hundreds of lives of refugees enter your kingdom of light, we pray. O oh, Mother, Mother of Jesus, Jesus intercede, intercede for, us. for us. Father, our faith to do your will and help us to know the saving power of your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now prepared for my dear friends that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, we reverently offer you these gifts in memory of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. In your service, may your love become like hers as you unite us more closely with the work of redemption. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do will always and everywhere to give you thanks and to praise you for your gifts as we contemplate your saints in glory. In celebrating the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, it is your, our special joy to echo her song of thanksgiving. What wonders you have worked throughout the world. All generations have shared the greatness of your love. When you look on Mary, your lowly servant, you raise her to be the mother of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, the Savior of humankind. Through him, the angels of heaven offer their prayer by duration, as they rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices be one with theirs in the triumphant hymn of praise.
Accountable holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray, by sending down the Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her in the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Patricia, our bishop, and hold the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light to your face. Our mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased to throughout the ages, we may merit to be curious to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us.
free from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Let's your offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace. This is Jesus, our hope and our salvation. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to share on His table. Lord, Lord not worthy that, that you should that enter, you should under, enter my under my roof, roof only say, say the word, word and, my and my soul shall, shall be healed. healed. For those who are joining our live stream celebration, let us now pray the spiritual communion prayer. O oh my Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament. I love you and I desire you to come into my heart. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, O oh, never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love consume me, that I may die for you, who died for love of me. Amen.
peace rise. Let us pray. Lord, you have strengthened us with food from heaven. May the remembrance of Our Lady of Mount Carmel always bring us happiness and peace in the knowledge of her protection and help us to become what you want us to be. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. We shall now have the Novena Prayer to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. We come before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, name. with you, you alone, alone to guide us. us. Make, Make yourself, yourself at home in, in our hearts. hearts. Through the, the prayers and intercession of our Blessed Mother, Mother may, may we find home, home with you, you and with one, one another, another, as we, as we listen, listen with our hearts, hearts communicating and in communion, having you to lead and guide us, to fulfill our mission, to build up the edifice of Christian love for the human family. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has sounded the invitation to this experience and process which he calls a journey to synodality. He explains it as walking in the same road, journeying together, taking time to devote in prayer, to listen to the Holy Spirit, to listen what others have to say, that we may discern and discover what God asks of us in these times and the direction where He wants to lead us. We are weak and sinful. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. We implore our Blessed Mother to walk this journey with us, having our Lord Jesus and His Gospel teachings to guide and empower us as we follow Him as our way, our truth, and our life. Ours is a perilous journey in a world that has become so secular, high technology replacing the need for God. Yet, the human heart will always long for God in friendship and filial love, and we have a mother who will always shield our hearts from illusion of false gods and empty satisfaction. The scapular we wear protects us from evil and is a visible sign of our Blessed Mother's nurturance and care. In synodality, we walk our journey together, and our great strength is in each other. We walk in steadfast faith, humble and confident, as we follow the way. All this we ask of the Holy Spirit, who is at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. We shall now sing our hymn to the Blessed Mother.
be seated for a while. We are almost at the close of our Novena days, and we remain grateful for your presence and participation. May the graces of these days flow as well to your families and intentions. Our thanks to Monsignor Ronald Quijano and Monsignor Gilberto Marengo for having presided at our graced celebration. We extend our thanks to our Eucharistic ministers, readers and offerers, altar servers, and documentation team for their services. In a special way, we acknowledge the participation of the Bacolod Queen of Mercy Hospital. Our appreciation also goes to Manville Youth Choir for their accompaniment of our liturgy by their beautiful singing. Let us all give them a round of applause. We look forward to having you tomorrow, the last day of our Novena Masses. Ours had been an experience of journeying in synodality, day-to-day -day in spiritual communion, listening and participating as we journey with the rest of our people in a mission of service and love. May our Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, walk with us with her guidance, light, and protection. Carmel assures you of her constant loving prayers for you, your families, and intentions. Thank you once again, and may God bless us all. Please rise. We shall now have the blessing of the scapulars. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let, let my cry, cry come, come to, to you. you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Savior of humankind, by your right hand sanctify these scapulars, which your servants will devotedly wear for the love of you and of your mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel. By your intercession, may they be protected from the wickedness of the enemy and persevere in your grace until death. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Receive this blessed scapular and ask the Most Holy Virgin that by her merits it may be worn with no stain of sin and may protect you from all harm and bring you into everlasting life. Amen. Amen. I invite Monsignor Gilfredo Marengo to join me in giving the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go and be like Mary. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.